Florida Central Credit Union offers more holiday cheer. Tis the season to spend lots of money on parties, decorations, gifts, and at Florida Central, they get it. That's why they offer easy checking, where you earn cash rewards deposited the same day when you use your Florida Central debit card to make purchases. And then the Savvy Savings account helps you save all the cash back you've earned. Visit a branch or go to floridacentralcu.com and live your best Florida life this holiday season. Membership eligibility requirements and other restrictions apply. Insured by and see you a Revar Buick GMC is thrilled like you, man. Our first little bit of cool weather means you can get outside and do some fun things. Maybe swing on by Revar Buick GMC. Take a look at over 700 vehicles they've got in stock and all prices with insane discounts. Revard is your GMC price leader. And while things have been cooling down, their hunt to be the number one GMC dealer in the country is heating up. So whether you're on the lot or at RevardBuickGMC.com, Take a look at their massive discounts on every vehicle. You just won't see that anywhere else. But Brevard Buick GMC. GMC, we are professional grade. Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, 1985. Before the hit on Paul. Give me this fucking kid. What are you going to do? I'm going to kill him. And I'm going to chop him in 15, 20 different fucking pieces. Spread his body all over Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. It's exactly what the fuck I'll do. And I'm going to tell you another thing. I don't give a fuck who he's with. The minute I find him or see him, I'm going to kill him and I'm going to kill whoever the fuck he's with. For the first time ever, Sammy the Bull Gravano tells his story. This is our thing. Staten Island, 1984. Paul was more of a racketeer. He was into different businesses all over the place. Plus, he was the boss of the family, and he became the boss of bosses. He took a liking to me for those reasons, and uh, he started including me in different things and asking me questions from different times. I had originally came from the Colombo family. He knew that I did a piece of work, but now he found out that I understood business and unions, and I had told him I just had gone partners with this guy, for, uh, Joe Madonia from Ace Partitions. It was a drywall company. It was totally non-union, and I would go in and get jobs, but I'd always have trouble with unions. The carpenters' union. And uh, sometimes I was able to bribe the delegates or whoever came down, but sometimes I had problems with them, especially when I went into the Bronx. So he told Tato, my captain, take him to go see Chin. They have people who are controlling the carpenters' unions. So Tato did that. He took me to a club, I met Chin. He wasn't the boss at that time. Fat Tony, Fat Tony Solano was the boss. I believe he was a high-ranking captain or something like that. He actually took me and Tato over to somebody who was there, I don't remember his name, and introduced him. He was the Cozier. His brother Mario Gigante was a captain. His other brother, Carmine Gigante, was a made guy. He had an army around him, and I understood he was extremely powerful. He wasn't the boss, but you can consider him a, like a street boss. Um, when I told him my problem with the Carpenters Union, he told me there's a guy, Fat Vinny DiNapoli. He's not a friend of ours, meaning he's not a made guy, but he controls the Carpenters Union, especially in the Bronx, where they're doing all this rehab and HUD work and stuff like that. He said, let me talk with Fat Vinny, and uh, I don't think you'll have a problem anymore. And we left. A couple of days later, I got a message that a guy named Vinny DiNapoli, Fat Vinny, wanted to see me. 
and I went to meet him in the Bronx. He took me on the side and he said, Sammy, I spoke with Mario. Mario gave me messages about you. I'm going to take care of you. Every job you have, let me know where it is. Nobody will ever come to the job. You could run non-union out here. Just put it on record with me so at least I know when I could cover you in advance, not when there's a problem. Before there's a problem, you'll never have a problem. So I thought that was great. And it made me closer to Paul. I actually thought he was the best thing since sliced bread. He was very fair, he was very open, sociable. I liked him a lot. I became a made member under him. So I recognized him as the boss, the father of the family, my father. So my allegiance to him was extremely strong. There's many, many incidents that I was doing jobs and before you know it, he was starting to use me to talk to this union guy or that union guy. And the more I got that heavily involved in the business, my street smarts and what I did in my prior life as a kid growing up in and out of construction in different trades, I started to understand it and my reputation was growing and I started using that as well. I was pushing, I was pushing on unions. We controlled the Teamsters Union in New York. The Teamsters was the people when there's a construction site, the gate that goes around the entire building, the guy who stands in front and opens the gate so all the trucks, the cement trucks and everybody goes in, is a Teamster foreman. So I was starting to meet Teamster foremans, delegates, and people John Cody, who was an Irish guy, was directly with Paul Castellano, and he controlled that union. So I was becoming very, very powerful. And I started opening up one company after the other. I understood business in a different way. I understood it as a street guy growing up, as a working guy. And I started learning different things from Paul Castellano. He was brilliant. He had great ideas on how to do things and how to control things. And don't bully people, don't do that. There's different ways of doing it. And I learned. I was like a sponge sitting next to him, occasionally in the house a lot. I got to know the maid. Tommy Bellani, I got to know him well. He was his driver. He became a captain right away. A rough type of guy, a real bully type of guy, actually. I knew him before they had a club, Crescitos, in Staten Island, him and his brother, Joey Bellotti. And as a kid, I went to that way before I got made. So I knew them from there. And uh, I knew they were pretty powerful guys. And I got along with them pretty well, knowing them before, starting to know them now. But um, Paul, getting back to Paul, when Christmas came, I was invited to come up at Christmas time. A lot of captains, acting captains, some made guys, mostly guys who were around him on a more day-to-day -day basis that he was using. Not everybody in the family. I believe one year on Christmas, I went there with my wife. I think my wife was in shock when she walked into this house. Not because of the size of the house or how beautiful it was, the people that were there. My wife wasn't used to uh, mafia. She really didn't have a major understanding of it. She had an uncle who was a made guy, but she hardly knew him, Bayonne Joe. He was made in, uh, by the Banano people. And, uh, but he was in prison most of her life. So she really didn't know him well. And, uh, and seeing all these guys, I mean, I kept what I, my business very private. She knew my friends 
or street thugs with me, but this was a different type of level. And um, when we got home, she asked me, why did he invite you to this party? I said, listen, Deb, I wash his car every once in a while, okay? So he likes the idea I make it nice and clean. I didn't want to talk to her about it. So she started laughing, joking, and that's what I do. I just pushed it off. That's the kind of relationship I was starting to have with him. I met, went to many, many sit-downs. He sent me to a sit-down when they had the concrete club, and he sent me there. Again, I was never a captain at that point. And he sent me to this meeting, and uh, there was all bosses in there. Fat Tony was in there. Tony Ducks was in there. Jerry Lang was there to represent the Clomo family. And uh, they all talked to me about the Concrete Club. And uh, they were great. Fat Tony especially made jokes of it. You're a young guy, you're a good-looking guy. Why don't you go out with the broads? What are you doing with us, us old farts and whatever? Tony Ducks also said, listen, Sammy, I see you're nervous a little bit. We know that Paul sent you here. So when we're talking to you, when we look at you right now, you're a boss, you're Paul to us. Say, speak your mind, don't be nervous. It was a great meeting. I didn't do a lot of talking. I didn't voice when I really wanted to voice. I had respect for them. They were giants to me. I went back to Paul's house and uh, Paul said, how'd the meeting go? I said, it went great. This is what they said. This is how they treated me. He said, they're good guys. He said, what's your opinion of this whole thing? They were gonna use all of their union power. Every family had different unions. Use their power to control all the jobs over $2 million, concrete jobs in, the, in New York. So this is what do you think? You want my honest opinion? Of course. We're all gonna go to jail. It's too big. These people here, they have people working in their buildings who know the cost of the job. The job is gonna be inflated for people they use all the time. They're gonna know they're caught in a trip bag. They're gonna know that these, this is a setup. A lot of these people probably know politicians or FBI or whoever. We're all gonna go to jail. You're right, you're right. You're right, Sammy. It's exactly how I think. Then why don't we pull out, Paul? Why don't we just not do it? He said, it goes in Austria. They'll all be partners in this thing, except for us. We're alienate ourselves and our power. And then the unions that we control, they will want to use those unions. So I have to go along with the flow. I don't like it, but I have to go along with the flow. I like what you did, and I'm going to pull you off, and I'm going to make somebody else handle this concrete club. I said, Paul, I'm not afraid. I'm not worried about going to jail or anything like that. That's, that's not what I meant. No, no, I know, but I need you. You got a good head on your shoulders. I need you for a lot of things in the construction industry and in the street too. You have two qualities. You're a tough guy, I know that too. But I like the way you do business. I like the way you handle the unions now. You've become very polished in your actions. You give things a lot of thought, just like you're giving me with this. That's a tremendous thought. I'd have somebody in there, they'd come back, yeah, this is great, we're gonna make millions of dollars, let's do it. That didn't hit you. But I need you for different things. It's not because I don't, I'm taking you off that because I need you for other things. 
So this is what I had going on with him. There's so many meetings. He sat down with uh, uh, Purdue, the guy, the chicken Purdue. And uh, he had problems with unions and stuff like that, and he wanted Paul's help. He made Tommy DeBellotti drive him and was there all the time, and he took me to that meeting. I really don't even know why, but he took me to that meeting. Me and Tommy actually sat on the side while he talked to Purdue. Purdue told him he had union problems. He wanted Paul's help. And I heard Paul say to him, what the fuck did you just call me, a gangster? Purdue, the guy looked like he was panic-stricken. No, I didn't, I didn't say that. No, I know you didn't say it. But what makes you think I can control your union problems? Why would you come to me? Years ago, I tried to do business with you but you wouldn't do business with me because I was a gangster. But now that you have troubles, it's not beneath you to come to me. Take a fucking walk. Watching him talk like that, watching him conduct himself like that was amazing. I had great respect for him. Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, 1985 before the hit on Paul. Stymie was my right-hand man. Top-notch. Did a lot of work with me, by my side all the time. And uh, we owned Tally's Bar together. One day, this guy who was with the Colombo family, steroid guy, big guy, muscled up, he went into a bar on the Utrecht Avenue, the Green Lantern. The Green Lantern was owned by a wise guy, made guy, who passed away. He was in the Genovese family. His wife took over the bar and continued running it. Her husband's friends, made guys in the Genovese family, took care of her, took care of the place and uh, did what they're supposed to do in Gozenos. This guy came into her place and uh, slapped her around, broke up the joint a little bit, took the money out of the register, and he left. She knew Stymie. The bar was about a mile away from Tally's. She was hysterical crying. She ran to Tally's to talk to Stymie, and she was telling him the story, what happened. She knew the guy's name, and Stymie told her, don't worry. Go to your friends. Go to your husband's friends. Tell them what happened. Tell them who it was. The wonders of the sea meet the joy of the holidays at SeaWorld's Christmas Celebration. From underwater discoveries to enchanting shows on ice and Sesame Street Land to a winter wonderland filled with magic and millions of sparkling lights. It's a holiday celebration like no other, only at SeaWorld Orlando. Select dates now through January 2nd. Save up to 40% on tickets and annual passes during our holiday sale. Hurry, offer ends January 1st. Taxes, service fees, blackout dates, and other restrictions may apply. Holiday shopping never used to be this easy. Told you, Grandma. You sit on the couch and buy gifts on your phone? It's Cyber Week at BJ's Wholesale Club. At your age, I scrape together loose change from under the cushions of this couch and walk 10 miles to get a blender. Now you can get small appliances, TVs, hot tech, and toys at up to 60% off at BJ's right from this couch. Now, help me lift these cushions. Maybe we'll find a buffalo nickel. Don't miss BJ's Cyber Week deals now through December 1st at BJ's.com. BJ's, absurdly simple savings. While he was talking to her and consoling her, the guy came in. She started crying. That's him. That's him. Sammy immediately confronted him and abused the shit out of him. There was a couple of people in the bar. There was a guy in the bar. 
and there was this girl. She was an Asian girl. Simon was going out with her. He was dating her. She was there as well. The guy left the place. He rattled the guy, and the guy left. He told the woman, don't worry about it. I told you. Talk to your, your people, your husband's friends. They'll take care of this problem. And whatever you need, you need me to come tomorrow and help you straighten the bar out. This guy wrecked half the bar, breaking glasses, bottles, everything. She thanked him and she left. Stymie sat at the end of the bar talking to Betty. Her name was Betty. Matter of fact, we used to call her Betty Boo. The guy came back. He came through the front door very quietly. There was two doors. Stymie didn't hear him come in the front door. There was another door. Stymie got up from the bar to play something in the jukebox that Betty wanted to hit. The door flew open and he started shooting. The first shot caused caught Stymie in the side of the head. He went down. He was shot a number of times by this guy. And ran out. I was on trial in a case. And, uh, I went to sleep early, and I got a call. Huck called me up, another guy in my crew. He said, Sammy, there's, there's a problem. Uh, you got to come down. What happened? I got caught tomorrow. What happened? He said, Sammy. I said, what the fuck happened? It's stymie. All right, hold on. I hung up the phone, got dressed, and ran down to, from Staten Island to Brooklyn, where the bar was. By the time I got there, Stymie's body was removed. Hulk says, Sam, he's dead. They had a sheet over him when they took him out. When they took him out, how do you know that? I spoke with Betty. Betty was here when it happened. There was another young guy from the neighborhood. Is Betty still here? Yeah. Go get her. I took her outside and I talked to her. I said, you saw it? Yes. You know who did this? Yes. Did you talk to the police? They questioned me. Did you tell them? No. Don't tell them nothing. And don't tell them you talked to me about it. I wanted it to go to the hospital that they took him to. I told Huck, take me to the hospital. I went into the hospital. He was in the morgue. I said, I want to go into the morgue. I'm a family member. They didn't want to let me in. Soon a doctor came, and he came over to me. Hey, Sammy, I, I, I know you. I know who you are. You don't want to go in there, bro. He's, he's dead. He's blown apart. He's unrecognizable. I want to go in. I don't know if I can allow that. I'm going the fuck in. Okay, okay, let me make arrangements. He took me into the mall section. 
he wasn't in one of those boxes or he was laying on the table. He was hit so many times. The first one blew half of his face away. That hit him in the head. I hugged him. I kissed him. I told Stymie, he won't get away. And I left. His wife was outside. They must have called her to identify the body. Her name was Karen. I grabbed her, I hugged her. She was crying. I said, I identified him already. Don't go in. It's him. You'll see him in the, in the funeral parlor. They'll fix him up. I'll go to the funeral parlor. I'll talk to the people. Don't look at him now. It's him. She hugged me. She kissed me. And I told Huck, let her go home. Take her home. Do whatever you got to do. I went home. There was nothing more I could do. I had court in the morning. I went to court, I came out of court, and I went to Tato. I told Tato what happened. I don't know the guy, but we know who he is. His girlfriend told me. There was a guy in there. I got people questioning the guy, too. He knows the guy. It's the same guy. They both verified who it was. I understand the story now, what happened. The Genovese people got in touch with me, that woman's husband's friends, who were made guys. They were fuming about what he did to that woman in the bar. But they told me, Sammy, we'll give you the lead. What he did to you is worse than what he did to this woman. We will go after him, but we're behind you. I told Tyler. It was basically out now about his death. I went to see Paul Castellano about it. Paul had information about it already. Obviously, I wanted to get even. Somebody had to pay for Stymie's death. This guy who did it. Paul had a meeting. There was me, Frankie DiCicco, Jimmy Brown, John Gotti, Tato. Paul said, I understand that Stymie abused him severely. I didn't have a chance to say anything. Frankie Chico exploded. He told Paul, what the fuck does that mean? In other words, if we curse at somebody, we abuse somebody, they have the right to kill us? Is that what you're saying? Hold up, hold up, Frankie, relax. Frankie wasn't relaxed at all. He knew Stymie. He knew how close we were and he exploded, and he wasn't calming down. He says, I'm gonna ask a question. Sammy, I already know your answer. 
My question is, he's with another family, he's with the Colombo family. If we want to kill him, if the Columbos are in the way, are we willing to go to fucking war over this? I know your answer, Sammy. I'm asking the rest of this people in this room. Frankie De Chico was the first one to answer. Yes. Yes, we're willing to go to war. I'm willing to go to war over this. They got to give us this fucking kid. John Gotti answered the same way. Tato didn't hesitate or didn't blink. Yes, I'm willing to go to war. It got to Jimmy Brown, and Jimmy Brown said, Paul, whatever you want, like a little cunt that he is. Frankie said, that's not what the fuck he asked you. Are you willing to go to war? Not what he says. He's asking you what you think. Paul says, all right, everybody calm down. Jimmy, I didn't ask you. I asked you just what Frankie told you. Are you willing to go to war over this? You're a gab regime. He looked at everybody. I, he must have been shitting in his fucking pants. Yes, I'm willing to go to war. Okay, then it's unanimous. I'll set up a meeting with, there's an acting born boss with the Colombo family, Andrew Marsh, Carmine Persico's cousin. He was a full-blown captain, and now he was the acting boss while Carmine Persico was away. He said, Sammy, I'm, you're going to go to the meeting. I don't want you to talk. I, I know you're extremely motivated extremely mad, you may say the wrong things. I'm gonna send Frankie DeChico down with you. Let him do the talk. We'll tell him what we want. Okay, it's good enough for me. We set up a meeting and it was on Bath Avenue. Andrew was talking about what happened. And that Stymie actually provoked it by abusing him. Frankie DeChico said, moments before he killed Stymie, who was not only like Sammy's brother, he's a proposed member in our family. He was about to become a friend of ours. He did work with us for us. He saw that Frankie wasn't gonna be nice about this thing. He said, we have him hidden in a home with legitimate people. They're not street people, they're legitimate people. Give us time, he told Frank. The kid owes me $90,000. Something went about a car. He said, let me recoup that money. He owes it to me personally. I wasn't about to be quiet any longer. I said, listen, if it's 90000 that you're worried about, you're worried about money. I lost my brother. I'll give you the 90,000. Give me this fucking kid. What are you going to do? I'm going to kill him. And I'm going to chop him in 15, 20 different fucking pieces, spread his body all over Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. So everybody knows you kill one of my fucking people. That's exactly what the fuck I'll do. And I'm going to tell you another thing. I don't give a fuck who he's with. The minute I find him or see him, I'm going to kill him and I'm going to kill whoever the fuck he's with.
Go to Hale. <laughs> Your local Hale Law Accident Attorneys want to wish you a happy holiday season. As we come together to celebrate, we're reminded that the holidays are all about being there for each other. At Hale Law, we're by your side and ready to fight like Hale for you every step of the way. If you or a loved one is injured in an accident, call Hale Law at 1-800-800-1414 or visit HaleLaw.com. From our family to yours, have one hail of a holiday season. At Accord Specialty Pharmacy, your community health mark, we know you want to get the most out of every dollar. That's why we offer great value with a wide range of services and products at prices that compete with the big chains. We're an independent pharmacy, but we keep our costs down and we're able to pass the savings on to you, meaning more of your money stays where it belongs, in your pocket. Choose Accord Specialty Pharmacy in Orange City. Health Mart, taking the time.